Welcome back to the Gamers Hall. I'm Chris. And I'm Adam. And today we're doing another episode on our guidance for the DM series. Yeah, and this one we're talking about how to set the tone for your campaign using your intros. Uh, what is important about this is every time you start a campaign, you really want the players to feel uh, a certain way. Um, that way they know what they're expecting and also it, it kind of gets people in the motions that you want to do. You know, it, it, it points them in the right direction. Um, you know, because a lot of this is first appearances matter. I mean, we've heard this in many different things. How you look for a job interview matters because it's your first appearance. You know, how you greet somebody matters, you know, socially. Um, and that's no different for campaigns. Yeah, your intro is your first appearance. Yeah, because let's face it, everyone says don't judge a book by its cover, but everyone does it. Yeah. If it's not, if it doesn't have a good cover, you're not going to be interested. If you don't look good for your job interview, they're not even going to give you the second thought because in their mind, you didn't put enough effort into it. Right. And this adds that extra effort. And we're going to try and help you with uh, some simple ways and understanding what these are in order to get that effort across and get that tone set from the very beginning so all of you can have fun together. The first one is going to be your calm introduction. Yeah. This is basically, hey, everybody starts in Hobbiton. Everything's cool. Everything's chill. Uh, you're having fun, you know, being together. Nothing wrong is happening. I mean, this is everybody's in the tavern together, just drinking ale, having a good time. This is what allows the party to get comfortable with everybody, to get comfortable with the setting they're in before they deal with the problem. Gives, especially for newer players, the, the chance to understand what you're doing. It allows everybody to take baby steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a comfortable zone. Everything's relaxed, chill, and you get to introduce each other through the actions of what the party is going to do. Yeah. It is the easiest way to start the campaign. And really, this will give people a feeling of you know safety uh, with what they're doing. It, they'll understand kind of, hey, my DM's not trying to destroy us immediately. You know, uh, it allows them to just get that good, uh, good feel of like, oh yeah, yeah, we're in here for a fun time, guys. Yeah, and also, a lot of new players don't fully understand what Dungeons and Dragons is. Mm -hmm. So having a calm introduction really gets them to the point where it's like, oh, I can literally do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like, like, so I, I can go do this. Yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. Sure. That's what yeah, you want to do. Do it. Right. And then you know. What, right. what if I want to do this? All you got to do is roll this check. And by the end of session one is probably the first time you say, oh, and here's the bad thing that happens. You know, like you could play a full three hours worth of gameplay before anything bad really happens because you're allowing everybody to get comfortable. Uh, and it's just, it's a good introduction for most ways to start. Second one we're going to talk about is the surprise factor. Ah! Okay. Sorry. Surprise. This is when the big thing happens immediately. Throws everybody out of whack. That is not what they were expecting, was it? No, 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 no. No, that is not what they were expecting. This sets the tone for immediate, like, oh, we've got to do something. Something is happening. You see that? Meteor falls out of the sky. Everybody turns blue. You know, ghosts are raising from the ground. Everyone wakes up in prison. Yeah. This is that oh crap moment, and you start from the get go. Yeah, immediate player engagement. Yeah, they, they gets their their adrenaline running. They're already thinking. They maybe this allows them to make mistakes early on as well because now they get the they're like oh we got to do this one thing and it happens. It gives people that back and forth, and it also it immediately coalesces the group into go mode. Yeah, like. The, everybody knows that they have to deal with something because the one of the best ways of getting people to work together is to force them into a problem that they have to solve together. Yeah, you, everybody wakes up and they're in a funhouse dungeon. Who are you? What's going on? Why is there a key on the floor? Yeah. 
So this, this will set the tone for the rest of the campaign where the players understand that anything can happen. They, know, they now know that they should be ready. When they come to their D&D session, they should know that their DM is capable of throwing whatever at them. If they are willing to set a horde of goblins immediately rampaging through the town on us, what else are they willing to do? You know, it, it could be we might expect that one of our party members might just drop for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's also a very good way to force the party to get together without having that uncomfortable, I don't really know how to introduce myself uh, yeah. role play action. Yeah, it, it gives each player the chance to immediately show what they can do. And it, it, it secretly bonds them together to where once they've done the thing, they almost don't want to split up because they're like, listen, we already went through this. We're battle brothers. Yeah, so like, let's let's just stick together and see what happens. This is definitely one of the funner ways to start off, and it does take, uh, as a DM, it does take a little more planning and understanding what, what your group, before you do this, is capable of. Because it's also kind of dangerous. If you have a bunch of people that don't know what they're doing with, with how D&D works, sometimes this will uh, cause a little bit of gridlock on them where they're all like, uh, 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 I don't know, and they're like grabbing their paper going, I, can I do anything? I don't know. What do I need to do? Um, but for veteran players, oh, this is this is so fun. <laughs> yeah, for newer players that don't know what they're doing, DM, you're probably gonna have to to, to guide them a little bit. Like, well, you know, what's on your character sheet? Don't you have this ability or this ability? You could do one of those things. Yeah, like don't don't be afraid to remind your players that they have certain abilities that you know that their class has. Yeah, it's also a great way for skills to immediately become relevant. Um, you know that, and that doesn't happen a lot of times where skills are relevant right off the get get go. But now this wizard's going to immediately use Arcana to see what this effect turning everybody blue is. Do they know? No idea. A meteor fell from the sky. A cleric might be immediately rolling religion to see if there could be some god that's just angry at us. Is dropping a meteor? Why would this happen? Um, so it's it's a great way to start that action off fast and and, and it, yeah immediately and pull the engagement of the party into the game and into focusing on each other. Yeah. Next one, combat. Yep. Start with initiative. This is where everybody. Hey, you all ready? Cool. Roll initiative. This is where you go. Everybody starts out on a battlefield. Like this is the start of movies. Um, like. You know, they're already there. They're already in the midst of battle. This is another, this is kind of like surprise in a way, but this sets forth a different thing. Instead of a problem to figure out, you're already in the problem, which is battle. And it will set the tone for battle matters. Um, right. And this <clears throat> this could be one of those things where the, pl the players that <clears throat> have already... In their backstory, they know each other. They're already grouped together. Mm -hmm. They know their friends. Mercenary band, royal guard. Or they're in a situation like, for instance, they're in a tavern and things just burst open and happen in the tavern. And they know, okay, it's the humanoids versus these monsters. Yeah. It, this, is, this is also a clear way to start with, these are your foes. And these are your heroes. These are the people against each other. You already know where battle lines are drawn. You, it's it's great for people to just say, okay, cool. All I need to do is go deal with that. That's great. It is somewhat of an easy way to get people in, just in a different way. It's surprising, yet also calm at the same time. Where, cool, we can get right into the battle. I understand this. This is what I built the character for. And allows people to ease into that fight where they can start understanding how they work together mechanically mm -hmm. versus how they would work together outside. Yeah, and it's it's a great way to introduce two pillars of what Dungeons and Dragons is right away. You go straight into combat, and then after that, it's gonna be talking to each other, yeah. figuring things out. It's also a great way to introduce the uh, villain of the story from the very get-go. You can see the evil general on the hill. You guys can't get to him. You're, you're peons in this battle. But you can see what that guy is capable of. 
you can see that the dragon come rages through the battlefield and destroying it and then now your mission is to go catch that dragon and, and kill it before it has any ability to destroy the rest of this army um you know or it also gives you the mission of who you need to save like you during this battle you see the princess taken away you have to go save her you have to finish this battle off and now it's a chase to catch up to this so it, it gives a start to action it lets people bond uh and it gives a clear definition of who your enemy is so it's a it's a definitely a fun way to start yeah there's uh, i mean combat is a big pillar in Dungeons and Dragons and <clears throat> starting off with it is a good good icebreaker. Yeah. And that tone will be all right, my DM knows I I care about battle. We're going to get into several battles. So, they'll be battle ready most of the time. Yep. And for some veteran players who or even players that just really like combat, just getting it out of the way right in the beginning can can really set the tone for the role play that comes after. Yeah, they'll be Everybody will be much more comfortable and willing to go with uh, other suggestions once the battle is concluded. They've got their jitters out. They they don't have to yeah. wait and figure out who they're going to fight. They've already done it. Yeah, they've already had their fix. Now mm -hmm. it's time to get to the other stuff. Yep. All right, so now we're going to get into the history recap. Now this is a tone where the DM takes more on the front end. The party sits down. And what you're going to do is you're going to explain where they were before this or what has happened before this to get them to this point. This could be as simple as explaining this nation for the, versus this nation. Or it could be as simple as saying, um, explaining a, a very relevant event that has happened uh, like... Yeah, like, like a, um, a, a world or demographic review of where they're at so like yeah. they, they can they can understand the tone of the setting yeah. that they're in yeah this is like the calm introduction but a further lead up this is more you're you're building more on the front end before the players actually start it's getting them to understand this could also be where why a character is you're playing fifth level characters to start off with you can say well, this is what you guys have done. You've already defeated the Goblin Horde. You've already saved the Prince from um, the Bandits. You know, you've been hired by the, the, the Order of the Shield to protect this clergyman. Now you guys are here. Um, it's setting up the fact that you are important in this instance. There is so much history behind what you're doing. You as a group is doing something important. So the tone will continue to be, well, what we're doing matters because all this has already happened over here. Like, we need to continue what all this important stuff is on through the campaign because we're stuck in it. We're tied to it. We are bound to whatever history was here before. Right. And also, it's it's a good thing to, to start with this. If your players are used to playing in one setting and now they are in a brand new setting. So it, it lets them know like, hey, this is what this setting is like. These are kind of how some of the rules are or some of the things that are around you are going on. And so I, I'm letting it be known that these things are here if you want to dibble and dabble in them. This can also be a way to set up tension among the party where if you can say... Well, you're from different backgrounds and you're together and you're the history of what all these things happen. And now you have to figure out a way to work together because of this moment. Um, it, it also allows players that have lots of knowledge about particular things. Like I'm very knowledgeable about Eberron. It's one of my favorite settings. But somebody that does a history cap of where we've gotten to in Eberron allows me to play with that knowledge that I have in understanding that oh, I, can, I get to use what I know up here and continue pushing that along and knowing that I know that that's over there. So my character can play like he knows that that's over there because the history has already been built. So we have something to work towards. All right, so the last one we're going to get to is split the party. And right off the bat, I already know what you're going to say. Everybody always says that's a horrible idea. Not always. No, not always. In fact... Have you guys watched Critical Role? 
Have you watched any of the stuff they've done? They typically start with splitting the party. Because what's important about splitting the party is it allows for every character to be important. It, allows, it gives time for a player to show their significance and what they're actually going to do. This allows them to introduce themselves in a way and then lead towards something else. Um, because what you're wanting to do in this first session, this introduction, is is let everybody shine in their own way and at the end tie them together so then they can continue on the campaign. So this is going to set the tone for each individual is special. And what is it that they're doing in this campaign that continues to be special, but now it's more special together? Yeah, or each person has their own thing, but how does the, each person having their own thing bring the party together to go towards a common goal? Right. Uh, and this is good for um, when you guys want to play like you know special special characters that wouldn't normally be together, or even like evil campaigns. This is good because most evil characters wouldn't start out together. They would be doing their own thing. So now you can find a way for why would uh, an assassin, a necromancer, a dread knight, and a uh, blood wizard. Oh, yeah, a blood wizard. Why would all of these guys be together? What what has brought them together? But it starts with, yeah, the necromancer was busy in the making skeletons. And, you know, the assassin was gets a special missive from somebody and says, I need to show up here while he had just killed this random person, you know, it, it allows... The, ne the necromancer's thinking, I need dead bodies, this guy makes dead bodies. And what's important about this is it allows each player themselves to to tell what they would be doing. So this is setting the tone, not just for the campaign, but actually for how the character will be role-played. Because now they don't have to worry about the group as much uh, to, to try to fit in. It's more of, what do I bring to the party? What am I special for? And then you can work them in that way because it creates that tension of like, well, why is five special people joining together? You know, that's, you know, how is that those personalities going to clash? Plus, if they all have their own things that they want to do, eventually when they do get together and realize, okay, I can't do this on my own. I need other people. Well, we'll just come together and we'll help each other piece by piece, person by person, and right there, that I mean, that creates at least a, a plethora of things to do for at least the, the first 10 levels. Fair warning, this will also set the tone that the party being split is okay. So as a DM, you need to be ready for that. Be ready for the fact that now two of them want to go in this direction and three of them want to go in that direction. Um, but if you're set up for it and you know it's going to be coming anyway, that's not usually a big problem. It's usually a problem if everybody's trying to be railroaded and this one wants to go that way and that one wants to go this way. But if you set the tone saying, hey, yeah, it's fine. We're cool with what you want to figure out to do. There's lots of problems in this area for you guys to figure out and being split is okay. And that also will make the players understand, oh, when it's their time to play, I sit, up, I sit back and watch. I'll chill out. And, but when it's our time to play, they'll sit back and watch. So it does create this working together um, motion of back and forth that could actually be very fun in the campaign and, and feel good um, sitting back and watching. Yes, and it could be one of those moments also where you let the players know, hey, when you sit back watch and pay attention to what the other characters are doing so that when they catch back up to you they can say, I tell them these things, I explain these things, so that you're not having to sit through and try and remember exactly word for word and explain it to them because if it comes to a point where the DM has to has to solo somebody out and make the rest of the group leave and then like that's important, then you do that. But otherwise, let the players know that they need to be paying attention to what the other players are doing, even if they're are not there. Just don't try and interject during those times. Yeah. Um, it could be a fun way to start. I mean, if it might be the worst thing party should ever do. But, you know, that's a rule for the party, not a rule for the DM. So, in conclusion, you know, all these together are good examples and good ways to set the top. But the main focus is also going to be on the DM. Because these are examples, but the DM has to lay it all out. The DM has to do the prepping 
and the amount of enthusiasm and prep you put into it is going to show and the players are going to know if you're winging it versus like you actually had planned some stuff you figured some stuff out you actually worked their backstories or whatever into it to bring this all together very cohesively and if you don't do that that's gonna undercut the tone you was trying to present and honestly doing these things at the beginning will really help the longevity of a campaign because the more excitement and the more understanding a players have in a campaign than in general the more they're going to want to play it so if you set that tone correct from the beginning and everybody's on board and everybody understands where they're going this is going to make it that much better and if you guys like the content we're putting out don't forget to like share and subscribe yep hit that bell notification uh, so you know when we drop more content and just like the guidance spell try to help your dm get a little bit better Thank you.